on, Bob. <laughs> that looks like Mary Yazzie. Bummer. Hello? Where are you guys? You've got to get out here. I saw the Phantom Horse last night. You know what we saw last night? The inside of a motel room in St. Louis. St. Louis? Our plane finally took off at 7 last night. We didn't call you because we wanted to surprise you. Only the next thing we knew, we were being diverted to St. Louis on account of bad weather. So the airline put us up at a motel. But when we came back to the airport this morning, guess what? You're fogged in. We're fogged in. I have never seen fog this thick. Visibility's three feet tops. You can barely drive in this stuff, let alone land and take off. Let's change the subject. So you saw the phantom horse? Last night, right after the campfire, this glowing horse appeared out of nowhere, then went galloping away. And right after that, the main pipe in the pump house sprang a leak. Another case of bad luck? I think not. So while everyone's attention was on the horse, someone sabotaged the pump house. First the rattlesnake, now this. Yikes. Has either of you two ever read anything by an author named Charlena Purcell? She writes romance novels that take place in the Old West. That rules me out. I saw her on a talk show once. Seemed kind of full of herself. Why do you ask? I had to call her in order to open this old trunk at Mary Yazzie's. She knows a lot about the people who used to live at Shadow Ranch. I bet I know more about 19th century clothing design than she does. Have I told you about the cowboys that work for the Raleigh's? No, and believe me, I've been meaning to ask. Well, Dave Gregory, he's the foreman, and he's very cute, Bess. Wouldn't you know it? Anyway, I caught him secretly digging around in the cellar. He knows about Dirk Valentine's treasure, too. What about the other cowboys? Tex Britton, the head wrangler. The Raleigh's fired his sister when they lived in Phoenix. At first, he denied it. Then when he finally admitted it, he said he lied because he knew the truth makes him look bad. Yeah, it makes him look like he's been sabotaging stuff at the ranch to help his sister get back at Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. He says that's not true, that he doesn't even blame the Raleigh's for firing her. Words are cheap, Nan. Keep an eye on him. I found an old beaded handbag that may have belonged to Francis Humber. Was there anything in it? No, but if it's the bag that Dirk mentioned in one of his love letters, it could hold some sort of clue. What does it look like? Well, there's a bird on it, but the beads have completely fallen off this one section. However, it does have the name of the manufacturer at the bottom. It was made by the Chicago Mercantile Company back in 1881. That's one of the companies in my book. Is there anything else on it? Yeah, some kind of number. HB3941. Maybe that's what bead pattern it is. There's a bunch of phone numbers in this book. Maybe we can track down the pattern for you. That'd be great. Like I said, it could be pretty important. Especially if the part that's missing turns out to have something to do with flowers. We'll get right on it. That's it for now. Have fun. Wish you were here. Kidding.
I need a rope. Get my map out now. I'll just remember the petroglyphs I see and check my map later. Beneath Cappy's keys, Pappy's name, please. Why walk when I can ride? <laughs> 